Hi guys, Jim here again with another Sudoku video and today we will be solving a chess Sudoku as ever from the collection presented by the Cracking the Cryptic team. Cracking the Cryptic are a couple of YouTubers who solve puzzles every day um, and put up really entertaining videos of them and I really would recommend checking them out if this is the sort of content you enjoy watching, which hopefully it is because you are here watching me <laughs> solve a Sudoku, um, then they are definitely worth a check and they've also um, put forward these collections of puzzles which you can buy on Steam or on your phone and if you enjoy solving Sudokus um, really would recommend um, I cannot recommend them strong enough they are handcrafted puzzles they're very logically beautiful and consistent they have handwritten hints to go alongside them if you get stuck um, and they introduce you to these really interesting variants of Sudoku which is one of the variants we will be talking about today so yeah definitely check them out link in description etc now today we're taking tackling a chess sudoku and chess sudoku comes in three flavors it's by itself so it's a variant within a variant so we'll jump into king sudoku to continue going through the order and i'll jump into puzzle number two which is a two-star difficulty so what do we mean by king sudoku well in addition to the normal rules of sudoku whereby each nine by nine box nine cell row and nine cell column you need to populate the digits one you need to populate with the digits one through nine exactly once. There is an additional rule which says that if a, if you think about this like being a chessboard, if you think about the Sudoku group being a chessboard, and if you think how a king can move in um, chess, which basically a king can go in um, any one of the di the cells next to it in any diagonal or horizontal or vertical, but only one cell. It can only move one one tile over. Um, uh, there is a constraint which basically says if a cell has kings kings move cells around it cannot repeat that cell. So, so that being a six tells me that none of these digits is allowed to be a six. Um, and so it's only really relevant where you've got cells at the edge of a box, right? Because of that cell, obviously none of these cells could match this one because it'd be in the same box. But this cell, for instance, in addition to that not being allowed to be a five because it's in the same column, this and this would also not be allowed to be a five because it sees this five by king's move. Um, and then the corner cells are the most powerful because, again, you get you get three additional cells which are ruled out. Um, and actually, this software is really helpful because you can kind of see it grays out the cells that see that see that digit. So if you click on a digit, it shows you which cells can't be the same as it so none of the gray cells can be a six obviously you can't put a six in the box the row or the column but additionally you get these cells here <clears throat> right so that is a king's sudoku a king sudoku Not a king's sudoku that sounds nicer but anyway right so let's get stuck in so as ever with um chess sudokus chess i find the hardest variant um of the variants that i'll be playing through on my channel if you've been watching um the king I, I just struggle with the logic I'm not sure why um, but first we just treat it like any normal Sudoku right so uh, for instance in this box I can see that a one must go here because of this one here and this one here uh, that then teams up nicely with the one already given to rule uh, one into one of those cells ah, now here's where we get our very first bit of king logic so in this box up here this one rules out the, the, the column this one rules out this column as well so you know a king is in one of these three cells but additionally this one means that can't be a one so in this box ones are limited to one and two cells and that is when I like to drop in a pencil mark in the top corner um, I think it's called Snyder notation um, and it tells me that in this box ones are in one of these two places and it's very powerful you, you, you'll see how it gets used later um, hopefully if I ever solve this puzzle who knows um, as I say, I struggle with chess. Right, in this box, ones are limited to one of these two cells. Uh, what about twos? I like to just count up. I'm quite straightforward like that. I'm not very good. Um, okay, so a two in the middle box is actually given because of these of those twos there. Um, two in this box is now limited to one of these two cells, which is nice which teams up nicely here, doesn't it? So one of these three cells, one of these three cells is a two, and it can't be this one because of this two here. Uh, so one of these two cells is a two. In this box, twos are up there, which is not so useful. And twos are down here. Yeah, okay, so 
Not much more I can glean from twos. Threes are not great either, but I can limit threes to one of two cells in the middle box. Which in turn limits them there, but not that helpful. I think I'll leave it there for threes for the moment. Fours, here we go. So fours actually in this box is given, because that must be a four. And then here's why pencil marking is handy, right? Without having to remember that, oh, didn't, didn't I say that two twos could go here? Well, actually, yeah, now... I've removed one of the pencil marks with two, so I know that one must be a two. Um, does that actually help me with twos? Well, it does, because that cell can't be a two because of that one. So there must be a two in one of these two cells down here. This is therefore a virtual two in this column, uh, which teams up with this two up here to limit in this box a two to being only here because of this one as well. So that is nice, actually. So that's twos quite a bit more done now. So we were on fours, weren't we? So let's not give up the ghost there. Right, so fours, actually, that's nice as well. In this box, fours are limited to this cell. So that takes the place of a three pencil mark, which means I now know that threes are uh, where the three goes in this box. And if I look over here, that then gives me more pencil marks for threes in that box. Okay, sorry. So we were on fours, weren't we? Yes. Uh, fours in this box are actually limited to one of two cells here, so I will note that down. In this box, fours are limited to one of these two cells by these three fours ganging up. Um, <clears throat> can I do anything else with fours? Mm, we've got this sort of corner shape with fours in this box, so that's not too helpful. What about fives? Ah, okay, lovely. So fives in this box is actually given because a five sorts out that one. And then you can't put a five here because of this five by king's move. So you can see the king's move is actually you know, relatively powerful. I'm getting some I'm getting some good logic out of it. Those two fives going up on this box give me a five here. And also I now can complete this box with a seven. So that's nice. I'll just do that while I'm while I'm there. As I'm passing through. Can I do any more with fives? Uh, fives are limited to one of these three up there. That's not too helpful. No, okay, so I'll, uh, let me jump to six. So sixes are up here in that box. Six is actually given to us by this, by that six there, going up on that box. Um, can I do any more with sixes? I don't think so. No, not really. What about sevens? Okay, so I got a seven earlier, so that was nice. So that's helped this. Okay, so in this box, sevens. Ah, a seven's given in this box. They are. So seven can't go here but this seven this seven sorts that seven that box out that one sorts that one out and also don't forget about the king's move so that can't be a seven either so that is the seven in the box which again is lovely okay so in this yeah so in this box sevens are limited to one of these three cells and it can't be that one because of that one so seven is actually limited to one of these two cells um, and similarly, sevens are limited to one or two cells there. So we've got a nice little X-wing, as they're known, um, which I will not be able to disambiguate for the time being. Ooh, I'm missing one cell from that box, so that must be a nine, so that's nice. But before we look at nines, let's keep going with our numerical supremacy vibes. Um, okay, yep, so eight. Uh, so firstly, there's an eight in one of these two cells, but more importantly, if I look in this box down here, eights rule out these two columns and also this eight rules out this cell so that must be the eight in the box ah, and that gives me that eight which I literally just pencil marked earlier um, that limits eight to one of these two cells in this box eight's there but that's not very useful for the time being eight's are here now this is this is I love this logic right so I've got eights and sevens limited to two cells in this box which means I can't put anything else in this in these boxes because I need two cells for two digits, so there can't be anything else, right? If I try to make that a, I don't know, a five, um, then what would I put here? I'd need to put both a seven and an eight in that cell, so that doesn't work. So what I like to do now is I change the middle pencil mark um, to say that these cells now only contain a seven and an eight. And what that tells me is this column now, these, I don't know the order of these, but they are done, right? They are a seven and eight. So what I'm missing from this column is a nine and a six. So I will actually drop that in uh, like that. Ah, and lovely. And that nine has sorted that one out. So that six and nine was very nice indeed, because that is a six. <clears throat> and that is a nine. Uh, and then staying with nines in this box, nines are limited to one of these two cells. So again, I'll switch back to my corner pencil marks 
for that. So hopefully you can see the difference between nines in two cells versus the seven, eight pair, which cannot be anything else. Um, right, in this box, nines are limited here as well, because if I look at this nine, that takes care of this middle column, and then this nine takes care of that cell. So these are a seven, nine pair. Again, um, so pairing of sevens has been quite helpful here. This is why you pencil mark, because if I hadn't popped that there were sevens limited there um, from before, I would have not known about these pairs. So this seven, nine sorts this column out, doesn't it? Because now I'm only missing a five from that column. So that's good. And in fact, I'm only missing a five from this box while I'm here. Might as well drop that in. Um, and then fives are limited to one of these two cells. Right, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked by fives. They've been very useful, actually. Look, and fives are down here as well. Gosh, okay. Um, I'll pause there on fives. So nines, we were with nines, weren't we? So nines in this box are limited. To, ah, no, nines in this box are given because of these two nines here. That must be a nine. This is a nine eight pair now, again, by the by um, there being two nines and two eights across these two cells, so there could be nothing else. Therefore, this row still needs a four, can't be there, can't be there and there because of the four, uh, because of the eight nine pair, that must be the four for the row. Um, that leaves me with fours down there as well. This is great. This row here, um, eight nine assorted, so that must be a six. That leaves me a six in this box, which gives me a six in this box, which gives me a six up here. Goodness me. And then in this box, I know that six must go there, which takes the place of a one pencil mark from way back when. This is a one five pair now because there's a five and a one limited here, which means importantly that can't be a nine. So the nine must go in that cell, which gives me the nine seven there, which gives me the eight seven here. Wow. OK, that was a lot of logic. All very quick. That's got eight uh, up there this box is missing a three that means this box is missing a three and I couldn't put it there because only a one and a five is allowed to go there let me just um, excuse me I didn't mean to do that let me sort out my corner pencil marks this is a two and a three now to complete the column um, okay ah three is missing from this row and it's the only digit that is so it must be it Okay, good. This is one, five, and eight, uh, which isn't that helpful, but I'll pop it in anyway. That can't be a one because of this one down here. Okay, right. Did I even finish nines? I don't think I did. Right, that's now a nine, uh, which means this is a three, which means this is an eight and this is a nine. Okay, so eights are, nines are done now. Excellent. Um, okay. Uh, should I complete my eights journey? Well, eights and fours team up in here again, so that must be an eight-four pair, which means that's the two. That gives me a five there, a one there, a five here, an eight here, an eight here, and a four there, a four down here. Oh my days. I love it when these sort of puzzles come together like this. This means all your pencil marking from earlier was well worth it. One missing from here, twos and threes, which must be this way round, which sorts out the two, three pair over on the over on the left. And there we go. Puzzle solved in 12 minutes. Really love that one. That was great. That just sort of came together nicely. Um, because I do struggle with chess Sudoku, so it's actually quite pleasant to find one that um, just sort of fell into place like that. Um, if you watched yesterday's video, I had a two-star arrow Sudoku, and it took me nearly half an hour. So, um, yeah, two, two, the difficulty scaling can be a bit hit or miss. Can be a bit hit or miss. But yeah, two stars in the bank. Very good puzzle number two of my King Sudoku um, collection solved. And that'll be it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as ever, I'll see you next time. Cheers.